thank you for your time. Um, when we reported about um, you selling uh, the free distilleries, we thought uh, that would be a great and beautiful end to a very interesting whiskey story. And we thought the Postscriptum would be uh, golfing, enjoying yourself and having a good time. And then, you, then we had the news that you uh, bought Glen Allerkey. And our question was, why, why did you do it? Oh, what a difficult question. Actually, it's not a difficult question. It's got a simple answer. Look, selling, selling the three distilleries was a big disappointment for me. Um, I was really not a, a seller, um, but I was one of three partners. So the, it was, the result was we sold the distilleries. I just felt I had some unfinished business. Uh, um, in some ways, I was really disappointed that we really didn't get an opportunity to fulfill the potential particularly of Glen Glassach Distillery. Um, so I had a conversation, I had a casual conversation with, uh, with the Shivas Pernod people and uh, the conversation resulted in a more interesting development and to the point where they then we started discussing the possibility of buying a distillery from within their estate and as it developed it was apparent that this was the distillery that was probably most appropriate for both parties. Mm -hmm. um, um, and that conversation took uh, yeah, several months, although it was clear, in my opinion, it was clear that A, there was a willing seller and a willing buyer. Um, I think the seller was very comfortable that whatever happened, the distillery was going to go into safe hands. And, and the, kind of, the kind of charm in relation to this distillery was, it fitted our m modest operandi. It really did, and it had never been developed as a single malt brand seriously. They had, they had tweaked, kind of, on the fringes didn't done one or two things. So it kind of fitted the model that we best understood that we could take, we could take the distillery, we could research, intensely research the inventory and uh, take it on a journey into the kind of distribution network that we were familiar with. And essentially that means not engaging with the multiple retailers, but pe pe dealing with people like Christophe, you know, private independent independent uh, uh, imported distributors. It's the market that we're comfortable with. It's the boutique market. And it would allow us to, to take some liberties in expressing the personality of the distillery. So, you know, it was, the bottom line is that this is fun, you know, this isn't, this isn't really serious work, this is seriously fun, it's enjoyable, it's, it's an obsession, it's a passion, it's great. And to be able to do it, having developed three distilleries in a relatively short period of time, to get access to this distillery and to be given the opportunity to do what we're doing at the moment is just so exciting. You were talking about the personality of Glen Allerkey. So how would you describe it? What makes it special for you? Well, what makes it special for me, and, and there are many special distilleries, but um, from historically I was familiar with the, the quality of the spirit. And it's not a light space side. This is quite a full-bodied um, uh, um, spirit. And, and it allows us, we know then that we have the kind of liquid that we can, we can bring into contact with some very interesting, strong uh, wood aromatic flavours. Um, and so you will see, and you've probably seen as you walk around the distillery, you know, everything. This will go into, uh, from, a, from, a, from a single point of view, this will either go into fresh American wood, virgin wood, uh, PX, or also... Uh, Marsala, um, Sauterne, Moscatel, but, but big wood it, because it can capture this flavour and it can handle the flavour. Right. You did experiments with um, a peated uh, spirit uh, just two weeks ago. Yeah. How did this come out? I, honestly, the, 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 the peated product is just so fantastic. But we started off with great malted barley, the, 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 the parts per mil, the phenols in the malted barley are somewhere between 65 and 80 parts per million. So we know that if we can, if we can tweak the spirit cut in the right way, we can get, certainly we can get something like 
35 ppm of phenol into the final product, maybe a little bit more. Um, and there's a wonderful combination of phenols and vanilla and butterscotch notes in the spirit. It's fantastic. We will have to wait for some time until we can taste the final product uh, that's peaty. We, we will tease the market by allowing people like yourselves to taste it as it develops, but there are no shortcuts to quality. Of course. But what uh, is uh, available quite uh, soon is the core range, the 10-year-old in cask strength, yeah. 12-year-old, 18-year-old and 25-year-old. Um, how would you describe them? So are they uh, indicative for what we can expect from, from the distillery? They are absolutely indi indicative of what you can expect from this story and the pattern the cash choice in all of the expressions is pretty consistent in terms of the wood management and the wood choice. We've seen uh, uh, how they uh, taste from the 10-year-old to the 25-year-old. And What uh, really amazed me was how, how thick and, and rich even the young expressions are. Yeah, and, and you know, that, that reflects the kind of very top-end quality of wood that the liquid has been allowed to, to, to mature in. But it also, I mean, it's a good point you make, that it's a very full-bodied experience. Um, and the, the, the kind of substance of the spirit allows all of the wood aromatic flavors to be expressed and captured. Yeah. Mr. Walker, thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time.